Freestyle the news! Let's get it! Y'all ready? Go on, get your money right. Give them time, baby, looking like your money light. Everybody sorry when they cancel on the other side. Throw them at the house, the bend fold near the fire. Oh. Still out here swinging those cases of deliberations, confusing the jury like. Oh. Still out here beefing with nations and bullshitting patience to cover for netting, yeah. Oh. Save me the trouble, I want the next judge. Profile heavy like Roby Letter for Texas. Future kinda hurts like going fully electric. Firing your boss and selling off like we messed up. Buy me some red in my stock going extra. Applying the pressure like distance from Kendrick. Yo, stop all the presses, I exit. In my entrance and messy like death shit or Candace and bitch shit is crazy Conspiracy theories rocking your whole shit Nostalgia ain't working, you get ghosted My pride and everybody you host with Looking like a tabloid rapper for the diagnosis Dog one looking expensive Wanna be friends, what color you wanna text with? Hold up, I see monopolistic intentions Siphoning money like a translated investment The doctors got questions Show hey, 50 more guys that are giving a whole take No DLC or a four coming from Baltic Game changes with bitches who barely know shit about games you don't crave Culture will parasite, X Men too woke. Okay. Now it's the acolyte. Buy that blue checks to feed Elon new appetite. Here for his ego or down didn't rub it right. right. That's why he can. Filming in locker rooms, that's why you ban. Cancel like Blizzard, he making the plans. And hey, yo, shout out to Bam. I ain't taking this life back in his hands. And who here really fuck with the budget? You passing, but fuck it like half the crazy you already up in the shutdown. The government and Gallagher like, ayo, I'm ducking. I'm Marjorie jumping the speaker. Oh, Kevin is shuffling an eager. The apex of a hack, conspiracy query on like every other attack. Make the star like Dre if you gotta get me a plaque. And if you handed me the shot, don't James Harden the pass like oof. Too soon. James, what are you doing? Let him take the shot. Bro, he's open. Petty motherfucker. I have some advice for you. Uh, replace your phone case if it's falling apart. I had, this is a brand new case. If you've seen on other episodes, my phone had like this little thing just hanging from it and I would have to carry it like a fucking briefcase all the time. I just replaced it today and it is, it is life changing that I don't have to carry two things when I try to use my phone. That's to say, don't be like Congress and fix things that are broken. Hey! Thank you guys so much for watching Freestyle the News. If you like what you heard, please charge your nearly indestructible claws with high powered kinetic energy that glows pink as your teammate transforms into a giant blob person and use that momentum to take down the head of a giant mutant genocidal like button, thereby reviving the X Men once and for all. And leave a comment on your favorite bar. X Men 97 is so good. Listen, I know I tend to get a little nerdy about this kind of stuff, but I can't tell you how prescient and timely this piece of work feels in 2024. And they didn't really change like all that much of what the series was. They just elevated the elements to a higher degree. Characters like Cyclops are so much more rich and interesting and cool. His fight scene is awesome. Storm feels powerful. It feels incredible. And there's this amazing speech by Magneto in the second episode. And I just want to say to everybody who said that the X-Men were too woke, please pack your shit up and fucking leave. I don't know if a single thing exists to show how full of shit these culture war people are. They're still trying to complain and make it into some big thing and it just falls on deaf ears because the work is so good and they're so fucking soft. So please pack your shit up. You're fucking idiots. You are the death of the party. Like if anybody invited you to the beach, you'd start doing the Anakin speech about sand. That's how fucking useless you are. Ian, Miles, Chong, whatever your dumb fucking name is. Sorry, I just had to get that out. Uh, X-Men 97 is amazing. Go watch it. Even if you don't like cartoons, you'll have a good time. Anyway, before we get into this breakdown, I just want to remind everybody next week, we're doing a town hall for Too Soon Crew. Too Soon Crew is our patron service where you get extra videos, a really nice news roundup. I tend to post a lot of secret songs early and we're getting ready to release a single. So you'll get to see some stuff on that. You also get a discount on merch. And you can see little messages of yours in the episode at the higher tiers. We're finally implementing it this time. I'm really excited about it. So go check that out. It lets me make more content that I don't get to usually make because of the YouTube algorithm. But anyway, let's get into this breakdown. And we have a lot to talk about this week. It feels like all of the news that was insane dropped on Friday <laughs> at once. I'm recording a majority of this on Friday. So a lot of this is very fresh and super substantial and interesting. I got a lot to get through, so let's get into it. And let's start with Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro. Oh man, this has been brewing for a while. 
If you don't know who Candace Owens is, how do you not know who Candace Owens is? Candace Owens is a conservative political commentator. She says a lot of crazy stuff, talked a lot of shit on George Floyd. She wore a White Lives Matter shirt with Kanye, who, by the way, just... He's, he's an upstanding citizen, right? Candace Owens has a unique place in the conservative sphere because she talks a lot of shit. Like as bad as other grifters opinions are, and by the way, I understand that there are grifters on both the left and the right, but specifically Candace Owens, like her opinions are like genuinely like insane, like weirdly insane behavior. It's just, she's so transparently buffoonish. And I'm not the only person who says that. Her favorite comedian, Dave Chappelle, has said that about her. But listen, the situation we're talking about today has been brewing for a while, since October 7th. But Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro, star and co-owner of The Daily Wire, have been beefing over the response of Israel towards Gaza. Candace qualifying it as a genocide and Ben taking immense offense to that. And again, this has been spilling out onto X and other forms of media for a while now. People asking Ben his opinion on Candace and him kind of asking her to just kind of leave and almost like quit The Daily Wire. Candace refusing to back down, kind of making a few different media rounds to try to bridge a gap on things she was on Destiny Stream at one point, but it kind of reached a new level recently when Candace went from, hey, uh, Gaza is a genocide to, hey, Gaza is a genocide, and here's a bunch of anti Semitic conspiracy theories. Oh no. And again, Candace, as contrarian as she is, really leaned into everything like the cabal and who controls all the media and everything and it's it's not good and so you could kind of see the writing on the wall but today it finally broke on x when the daily wire finally announced that candace would no longer be working with them with candace herself issuing a statement on x because i don't because i guess that's what we do now uh the rumors are true i am finally free uh? okay candace now look i have to say also this is the second high profile a conservative media star that has left the Daily Wire in kind of a short time. It feels like Steven Crowder was just having his beef with Shapiro not too long ago. Over like $50 million. And then also Crowder had a bunch of allegations come out about him, which kind of toppled a lot of his credibility and his empire and his image. And look, I am clearly no fan of any of these people, right? But even if I take my politics out of this, what's interesting is that we always view like these big conservative companies as these grifters who are always together like a Spartan shield who will never bow down to like facts or any other opinions and look there are certainly people on the left like that as well i'm not going to act like pundits aren't pundits but it's important to note that punditry like just has a history of doing this eventually fault lines just occur and if you are a contrarian and somebody who's aggressive and outspoken and just likes to talk a lot of shit and double down on things that could be kind of fucked up this is going to happen Candace Owens, you can say, is kind of like in the vein of Kanye West on the political right. Obviously, the anti-Semitic conspiracy theories are abhorrent. Even her final message of like, I'm finally free, kind of references some of her other anti-Semitic theories. And to be honest, for all of the strength that The Daily Wire keeps projecting, it feels very self-involved. And there seems to be a divide in these conservative circles. Even now, if you search up this topic, there are people turning on The Daily Wire saying, oh, they're actively promoting censorship. How could they do this? Obviously that going into worse rabbit holes of anti-Semitism because of Candace Owens' circle. I think this is going to be a very transformative year, not only for the presidential election and what we're going to see, it's, it's gonna be unprecedented, but media companies are also going to go through a lot of shifts, especially the legacy media companies we've had for the last few years that are really, really diving into the culture war. Because the situation in Gaza is a very controversial issue that's not only just across political lines. There's a lot of different cultural identity-based factors there. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. Let me know what you think in the comments of this whole breakup, whether you think The Daily Wire is going to survive this or Candace is going to hurt their credibility heavily with their base. And speaking of beef, let's move on to the topic I wanted to start with. Kendrick throwing shots at J. Cole and Drake. Oh man, this is big. If you haven't heard, Kendrick Lamar was recently featured on Future and Metro Boomin's latest project, which dropped on Friday. And he has a verse on a song called Like That, where he goes in. That verse is fire, it's aggressive, it's intense, uh, and he throws a few shots, specifically at Cole and Drake. I'll tell you right now, I can't play this on YouTube because it's gonna demonetize this video. But if you go to Genius, you can already see like you got Futures verse with a with a couple little like things in there, and then you have Kendrick's verse with 
everybody just adding <laughs> descriptions of what he's throwing shots at. But the lyrics in question, which throw shots at both J. Cole and Drake are, fuck sneak this and first person shooter, I hope they come with three switches. First person shooter is a collaboration between J. Cole and Drake. If you walk around with that stick, it ain't Andre 3K. Think I won't drop the location. I still got PTSD. Both Stick and PTSD are tracks off Cole's album. These are like subtle shots, right? Motherfuck the big three, hit it, it's just big me. Okay, that's a direct shot because on First Person Shooter, J. Cole's collab with Drake, he references him, Drake, and Kendrick as the big three. And Kendrick's like, we're the big, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm the big three, I'm in me, big one. Big one. Also calling out Drake. For all your dogs getting buried, that's a okay cave with all these nines. He gonna see Pet Cemetery. That's a direct diss to Drake's last album for all the dogs. I know you may be thinking, hey, why aren't they just calling him a bitch or just saying something more aggressive? These are like high level shots, man. It's easy to call somebody a bitch. It's harder to imply other things. And there are a lot of things implied in this diss track. Now there's been a lot of widespread conversation, people being like, is this good? Is this bad for hip hop? Is Kendrick serious? Is he not serious? I'll give you my take. Uh, I think he's competitive and talking shit, and it's good for hip hop. Listen, if this was like like disrespect on a higher level, like I really don't like these people, I think it would be a little bit more frustrating. But this is just straight competition. It's kind of like Control. If you don't remember, Kendrick dropped this verse Control a while back, which kind of called out a lot of rappers, got everybody aggressive and really, really into the competition of rap. And this kind of reignites that. Kendrick in past interviews has been nothing but complimentary to J. Cole and also been complimentary of Drake. Both Drake and J. Cole have also been complimentary of Kendrick. So this feels like the old school like yo let's start some shit let's go which is good in hip-hop a big thing about rap is blades sharpen other blades as somebody who's been involved in beefs with consequences sometimes i do wish like some of that competition and some of those disses can just be just like hype a lot of times battle rap goes to the most offensive like insanely like crossing the line kind of place and because both mcs are in that zone that's what makes it so dope that's what makes it so high energy and competitive we're playing with dynamite it's it's it's, it's awesome so yeah let me know what you think in the comments if you heard the kendrick verse i'm sorry i couldn't play it i think it's good for hip-hop if you were a fan of today's song the flow and the beat and the vibe we were putting down i gotta tell you today's episode is sponsored by sound raw specifically that beat came from Soundraw. Listen, we talk a lot on this channel about the ethics of AI, especially because it's in the news all of the time. And one thing that I constantly repeat is, hey, AI as a tool is good and AI as a replacement, not the vibe. Soundraw is a great AI tool for producers and artists of all genres. It's a great starting point for a beat that you might want, a great tool for creators to put background music in their video, an amazing tool for producers to spin off and try new beats. You can even take a Soundraw beat and sample it as your own. And listen, they have an intuitive interface. Let's say you take whatever you've made and you want to put it up somewhere. Well, Soundraw has you covered on all of its licenses. Right out the gate, you don't got to worry about any copyright claims on your videos or any other weird issues that may pop up. But listen, if you're a producer or an artist or a content creator looking to jumpstart your creativity just a little bit more, and if you think that the rapper on this channel is cool enough to support in some way, and you're like, oh man, I, I want him to succeed. I like this show. Go to soundraw.io to try Soundraw for free and use the code ZED, Z-A-I-D, to get 50% off your Soundraw subscription today. All right, back to the breakdown. And let's move on to Donald Trump because he has had a lot of problems in the last few weeks. Now, if you haven't heard or haven't been following, Donald Trump owes $454 million after losing his criminal fraud trial in New York. And he does not have the money. That's not just speculation. His lawyers have asserted that he doesn't have the money to pay it. They've asked for extensions. They've asked for like, hey, can we pay this amount instead? And they have been denied. And so now it's getting very close to the point where the New York Attorney General, Letitia James, may actually seize some of Trump's assets herself. Now, before she does that, she has to go to a judge to get approval in order to seize those bank accounts or freeze them so he can't take money out of it. And of course, if that didn't fulfill the bond's total amount, she would seize other assets like cars, art, jewelry, uh, the frame disownment of Eric that he hangs on his wall. But another wrinkle got added recently as Trump got the okay from investors to take his social media company public, which is said to boost his assets to three billion. His social media company being Truth Social or OnlyFans for crazy people. Now, Trump himself has asserted that he has all of the money, which obviously we believe him, the guy who lost a criminal fraud trial. But I'm about 50-50 on whether this actually ends up 
hitting him. I think it does affect his campaign in a number of ways. Cash on hand is a big thing in political campaigns. And if Trump has to deal with this during this election year, it puts him a step back. In terms of competing with overall cash spent, he's kind of taken over the RNC full stop, installed his own person there and thrown out Ronna McDaniel. And so you may see some funds go to that, which by the way, I, obviously like saying this out loud, is insane. Like a guy running for president who's guilty of criminal fraud is using his party to pay his criminal fraud charge. Like that's that's insane. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments if you think Trump is actually gonna face any repercussions from this or will get away. What repercussions will he face? Now let's move on to Kate Middleton. Everyone has been talking about where Kate Middleton is. This has been the biggest conspiracy theory or the biggest like what the fuck is going on that you could have speculating about the royal family. And finally, tabloid bullshit met reality when Kate finally released this video saying that the reason she's been out of the public eye is because she was diagnosed with cancer. And at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. Now, obviously, there's been an outpouring of support. Also, a lot of questions about how we cover the royal family. Obviously, this is a wake-up call. Like, hey, maybe you shouldn't speculate on fucking everything. Kate does seem optimistic about her treatment. But I have to say, yeah, like it's no secret, it's disgusting the way the royal family is covered. And I think people finding out this way was necessary. Everywhere, people were speculating random shit, like is this version of Kate real? Is this photo Photoshop? Is this this? Is this that? And that all just seems so callous when you come to the reality of everything. I don't follow the royals all that much. I think it's just kind of a big clusterfuck, but I would hope it would make people reassess their faith in tabloid journalism overall. I don't think it's going to do a huge amount of that, but one can hope we'd at least have a little bit of respite to go, hey, maybe that wasn't a good thing to do. Also, wishing Kate Middleton the best and a speedy recovery. Hey, very quickly, uh, I'm recording this the next day. Also, now you can see Goku's face instead of him being folded into my visage. Uh, I'm also drinking pre-workout, so I'm being good about the gym. So as of this morning, it feels like the tabloid machine is already back in swing. People are speculating whether the, the video was edited in any way, which is fucking disgusting. People also like Blake Lively apologizing in the wake of all of this. But even with that, there does seem to be an air like, hey, maybe we need to re-examine how we're covering people in general and how gossip can injure a moment in different ways, even if it means you, the person who was gossiping, gets injured. That's a little egocentric how we're coming about this realization, but at least we're coming about it in some way, shape, or form. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments if you think there is going to be any small amount of self-reflection about this. I know we'll probably go back to normal at some point, but what do you think we'll take from this situation? And very quickly, I wanted to add on a story about the Moscow attack at a concert venue by ISIS. Now this is a developing story, but it's it's absolutely horrific. On Friday, multiple gunmen opened fire at Krakus City Hall in Moscow, resulting in the deaths of 133 people as of Saturday and injuring 121. This is an absolute horrific terror attack in Moscow. And aside from the fact that this is a fairly significant attack in the middle of a giant war that everybody is looking at, it's also a major attack from ISIS. And that is significant because all over X, there has been a ton of propaganda going around. Conspiracy theorists from grifters of all political spectrums saying that ISIS is actually Israel. I cannot state this enough. That is untrue. For a second, let's put aside my criticism of Elon Musk and the X platform and all that. If you are a fan of Elon or the X platform or any of those things, I have to really honestly tell you, please, 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 if you want your bastion of free speech to be free speech, it's not there yet. It needs detail-oriented people to understand that there are times where people hijack hashtags and make them go viral and misinformation spreads. This is a problem across all social media. So if you're a fan of X or, or, or free speech, I clearly am not, but I just wanna let you know, please take whatever you're reading on that platform for the next couple weeks with a grain, a, like the, the tiniest grain of salt. Even if you already do, reduce the grain size by a few more millimeters. But yes, for 
for some reason that conspiracy theory of uh, ISIS just being Mossad agents or whatever the hell spread like wildfire over X. And I think as of this taping, it's still going crazy. And so very quickly, just to dispel some information, A, Ukraine is not responsible for this attack. Kiev has denied responsibility. ISIS has accepted responsibility. On top of that, if you go, hey, well, why the fuck would Russia have a problem with ISIS? Russia has been beefing with ISIS long before Ukraine. And you should also know in terms of the severity of ISIS, like as an entity, Everybody got smoke with ISIS. Everybody, the Taliban got smoke with ISIS. ISIS doesn't have the power it once did or the size, but that still makes it scary if you know anything about insurgency from 2003 when we invaded Iraq. Now, obviously this is a developing situation. I'm gonna keep you guys posted, but please let me know what you think in the comments. Please, 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 please avoid any culture war situations like this. There are so many people who are taking the war in Ukraine and what's going on in Gaza and trying to shift it to every geopolitical conflict. This does not involve Gaza. ISIS is insane and unique in its insanity. Do not give them air. They are the worst people. Last but not least, I'm going to mention this. Uh, the Department of Justice is suing Apple for monopolizing smartphones. This is actually an enormous story that I'm mad that I didn't cover yesterday. So the Apple iPhone, as you know, is everywhere. Hi, look, and Apple products have their own ecosystem. If you have an iPhone, right? It benefits every other Apple product that you have. I can tell you right now that I use an iPad as my teleprompter and this and that work really well together. But the Department of Justice is alleging that Apple has used multiple other tricks, some of them violating antitrust laws to keep people strapped to their iPhones and not at all looking for competition anywhere else. And this is a robust lawsuit. Several antitrust experts have said the DOG came with some smoke. And the thing is, I don't even have to go into too much detail for you to kind of already know what I'm talking about. We already know about the green text between Apples and Androids. That's been a conversation for years with even makers of Android products saying, hey, this green text is actually prohibitive to competition in this space. It also alleges that Apple has used underhanded tactics in both its hardware and its software. That means like things like the App Store to give itself an advantage over its competition. The App Store and software around Apple products is a big deal here. All to keep selling Apple iPhones, keep people addicted. Look, this has been a bad time for Apple. The Apple Watch's whole saga of like stealing proprietary technology, the canceling of the Apple car, and now this. It's so bad that yesterday Apple lost $113 billion in value, which just to put into perspective is 3% uh, of, of Apple's value because it's worth like $3 trillion. <sighs> And look, this is a serious antitrust lawsuit, especially after Epic won its lawsuit over Apple. There seems to be a real push on all sides against them with multiple other tech companies signing on and having beef. And so look, this is obviously developing. There's going to be way more information down the line. But if you want my take, just in general, monopolies are bad. I don't have to explain to you how cable companies suck. And we're going to have to see where this develops. But Apple has to take this absolutely seriously. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Aside from Apple and the monopoly, thing what's your experience interacting with an iphone or people without iphones or interconnectivity between your smartphone and other ecosystems anyway that's going to do it for today's show thank you guys so much for watching please like comment subscribe sign up for too soon crew you can go check out Z talks on nickelodeon quiet on set anyway my name is Zetabani. thank you guys so much for watching